whenever you guys are. All right, you're good to go. All right, well, hi, my name is Angelique Hill. I am a regional representative with the University of Tulsa. I am actually based in Fort Worth, Texas. So pre-COVID, I would have been at Lamar High School bothering you in person, but I'm glad that you're able to virtually join me today. Just know that as your admission counselor, I'm the one that reviews your application and can help you throughout the admission process. I'm your advocate through that process, so feel free to email, call, or text me if you have any questions, and we're just going to go ahead and get started. Definitely throughout this uh, virtual presentation, still feel free to ask questions and interact. I love interacting with students and especially during this time where I can't be with you guys in person. I really appreciate the interaction. Do you guys have any questions before we we get started? No, I don't. So, well, just to get started, um, can I get your name and what you're interested in studying? Yeah, my name is Natalie. Um, something I'm interested in studying is linguistics major. And also, um, if not that, then Spanish or majoring in business and then minoring in Spanish. Okay, those are definitely good avenues to look at. Are you currently a senior, senior this year? Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome. So I love picking on seniors. This is the perfect time to narrow down your options and see what piques your interest in as far as a university. And I think someone else just stepped in. Um, my name's Angelique. Uh, if you would like to introduce yourself and let me know what you're interested in studying, we can go ahead and, we haven't started just yet, but we can go ahead and get that out of the way. Hi, I'm Daz and I'm a senior this, well, uh, uh, this year too. And uh, something I want to go into is like kind of like linguistics and communication sciences and disorders. Okay, that's perfect. So you guys are both kind of on the same page. Natalie and Daz, I appreciate you joining me today. Um, like Daz, just in case you weren't able to hear, my name is Anjali Hill. Um, I am one of the regional representatives with the University of Tulsa. I'm actually, my home office is based in Fort Worth, Texas. So normally I get to bother you in person at Lamar. So I'm super glad that you guys are joining me today. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with some quick facts about TU. In case you guys didn't already know by all the colors, we are blue and gold. Um, we also have a little bit of red thrown in there. Um, if you ever see any of our t-shirts, the reason we have red is because of the hurricane flag. Um, it's red and black. And in case you guys didn't know, we are a golden hurricane. The student body creates one golden hurricane. And this is the hand sign if you ever wanted to use that while you're um, showing your friends. But to give you some more, some more facts about TU, we're located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is Northeast Oklahoma. It's about a four and a half hour drive from the DFW area. So not too far, not too close. Um, and it's about a 45 minute flight from the DFW airport if you choose to fly out quick and easy. We have about 3,300 undergraduate students total. And if you factor in our, our graduate students, it's about 4,400. So I like to say we're small, but we're mighty. We have plenty of opportunity to get that one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors with our 11 to one student to faculty ratio and our average class size of 21. So the only flaw about this virtual world, you guys, is that there's construction going on on my street. <laughs> So if you hear any of that, just definitely let me know or wave your hand and I'll try to speak louder to overpower that or take a little break. But I do apologize for that ahead of time. Um, but back to the numbers, just to play on that small but mighty, we are actually one of the smallest D1 universities in the nation. So there's plenty of things to do on and off the field on game day. And we also have a one of the, the more important numbers on here is that 94% placement rate. And basically what that means is more than nine times out of 10, we're gonna get you a job or get you into grad school within six months of graduating with our bachelor's degree. So definitely something to think about as you navigate through the college search, y'all. There are schools here in Texas that I've seen their placement rates are closer to 60%. That The number is important because you don't wanna spend four years of your blood, sweat, tears, and hard work and not get to where you wanted to go in the first place. Do you guys have any questions about these numbers? Um, no, I 
I don't. So no one cares about the most important number on this slide, Miss Goldie, our canine ambassador. Oh yeah, I wanted to ask for that. Yeah, what does that mean? Like, can you can go going to that. So she is always at our events. You'll see her on campus. She's just kind of the embodiment of TU. She's a great dog to be around. I actually have a couple of selfies with her and she's basically like our little mascot around campus. So if you ever come to events, um, you will see her there. We actually have virtual opportunities available, but we also have in-person options too. So if you are interested in that, definitely I'll talk a little, a little bit more about that later on throughout the presentation. But on to the next slide, you guys. Let's talk a little bit about student life. So on campus, as far as eating, which I feel is the, one of the most important things because I'm a huge foodie. We have so many options on campus. We actually have eight dining options to choose from. And we also have Chick-fil-A. So I feel like that's enough to say right there. But if that isn't, we have Pizza Hut too. There's also like some homegrown restaurants on campus as well. So if you like sushi, if you like pasta, we have all those types of options on campus to choose from. And the great thing about the city of Tulsa is even if you step foot off campus and want to grab a bite to eat, there are plenty of options on campus that actually offer discounts to TU students. And they also even stay open late because we know y'all are going to be college students cramming in uh, studying for exams late at night. So we want to make sure you have fuel, food to fuel you as well. In regards to sleeping on campus, there are plenty of options to lay your head at night. We have options like all male, all female, all freshmen, co-ed, uh, single rooms, double rooms, suite style, you name it, we have it. Uh, there are plenty of options to choose from. Our, we do require our freshmen and our sophomores to live on campus. With that being said, over 80% of our students actually choose to stay on campus all four years, which I think says a lot about the campus life because a lot of students usually when they're in college they want that sense of independence and they they want to get as far away from campus as possible but at TU students want to stay and be surrounded by the campus life and the in the people and also want to want to be involved outside of the classroom as well and back to that D1 that D1 atmosphere like I was saying there's plenty of things to do on game day, whether you are behind the scenes or on the court. Uh, we have 13 D, 13 D1 options to choose from. Um, so, or actually, sorry, 17 sports to choose from. So if you are interested in that, I highly encourage you to speak with the coaches and make sure you go to ncaa.org and fill out that, that recruitment form as well. And then if you're like, hey, Angelique, that sounds great, but what else do you have for me? We have plenty of other opportunities to be involved on campus. We have over 200 student organizations on campus, so there are plenty of things to dive into. And the great thing about it is if you go through our list and you see things like Greek life or our intramural sports, or our esports, and you're like, hey, this still, I still don't see something that's right for me. The great thing about it is at TU, you and four other friends can go to our student association and say, hey, we really want blank on campus and we will work with you guys to make sure that gets on campus for you. Do you guys have any questions about student life? So I have one. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I had one question. It was just a small one. Um, oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, like bathrooms, like, do you guys have like choices between like community style and like private? Yes, we do have those options. Um, that's a great question. And with the suite style dorms, you definitely have that option as well at, or with the dorms, you do have that option outside of suite style. And then as far as the apartments, you have options for private bathrooms as well. And then if you, let's say you want to live in a, a room that isn't traditionally made for a private bathroom, we, if you work with our housing department, there are ways that you can be accommodated. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And then I also wanted to piggyback on getting involved on campus. Sometimes students are overwhelmed because they're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. And at TU, I'll let you know that it's very easy to fill your plate and there are so many things to be a part of. But the great thing is whenever you start that orientation week before you and before you start school, you'll be exposed to um, 
all of these organizations through an activity fair. So basically, you get to shop around and see what type of organization on campus is fit for you. And we'll be welcoming you, welcoming you with open arms and letting you know what those organizations do so that you can have a better decision after leaving that for fair of what you would like to be a part of outside of the classroom. So I also wanted to make sure to highlight some traditions um, that we have at TU as every university does. Um, one of my favorites is running through the fountains. This is also during orientation week. It's basically like the, the last hurrah before classes start. So if you wanted to just get that energy out before you get down to the nitty gritty of classwork, this is a great event, event to be a part of. Um, another aspect that I love about running through the fountains are the actual fountains that they run through. The cool thing about TU is that, well, I like to say we're eco-friendly, blue and gold makes green, but on campus, if you ever go have the chance to go visit, but you don't see our fountains running, it's because there's not enough recycled water on campus, and those fountains are actually ran by recycled water, which I think is pretty, pretty sweet. But some more hurrahs is, as I like to say, is through the freshman storm. So this happens the first football game of the year, and it's where freshmen get to storm the field before the football team does at our home game. And if you are a fanatic like me and you love cheering on your peers, this is a great opportunity to get that out and show some school spirit as well. And then homecoming is a crowd favorite as well. This this event, they go the whole nine yards. They celebrate all the way up to the homecoming game and hopefully a win as well. As you can see, there's a bonfire included as well as fireworks. This is um, typically the first time parents see their students since they drop them off for the first day of school or the first time, first time at school. So this is a great experience and it's actually um, oftentimes centered around Oktoberfest. So if you wanted to bring your, your parents along or your aunts and uncles or grandparents to, to celebrate the Oktoberfest, that's definitely a great thing to, to consider too. We're actually ranked, I believe, in like the top 10 as far as Oktoberfest in the nation. So your parents definitely don't want to miss out on that. And then Kindle Bell, y'all, is one of my least favorite traditions, at least if you do it incorrectly. So I say this because rumor has it is you're not supposed to ring the Kindle Bell until after you complete your final exam your senior year. So typically students do this during their graduation ceremony, but they say if you decide to ring that bell anytime before then you won't graduate on time. So one of our university ambassadors, which are our tour guides for campus, actually decided, you know what, I'm gonna try this out anyway. So he rung the bell before he was supposed to and he ended up staying an extra semester with us. So I say all this to say, I say all that to say, it, if you ever get the chance to visit campus, don't ring the bell until it's time. But if you choose to do so, let me know how that works out for you so that I can tell your story to future students. Do you guys have any questions about traditions? No, that just sounds really fun though. Yeah. Yeah, they sound and, really cool. And definitely the, there's more traditions involved with being a student at TU, but these are just ones that we like to highlight to give you a glimpse of what it's like. But I want to break down this chart, which is my favorite part of the presentation. I like to call this the circle of life for student success. The three blue bubbles are things we've implemented throughout the years, and the red bubble is something that we have fully rolled out to the student body uh, for this year. So this is our second year with it, but rolling it out to the the full student body, this is our second year. But I wanna make sure to break down all of these bubbles so that you can see how much effort is put into to making sure you're successful throughout your whole time that you spend at the University of Tulsa. So our health and financial well-being advisors, that's pretty self-explanatory. So these people will talk to you about payment plans, different types of loans, jobs you can get, get on campus through, through work study or non-work study, and then even outside scholarships. And I selfishly like to think that these kind of conversations actually start with your admission counselor, so me, and I like to start them off with transparency and let you know what you'll be set up with, because if you think about it, 
you're going to be going, you're signing up to go somewhere for hopefully at least four years. You want to make sure you're happy when you're doing that. And that's in all aspects, including financially. So I'm very transparent with you from the get go, even if that means having conversations like, hey, this may be an academic fit for you, but it may not be a financial fit for you. And we can break it down line by line or even to the fact where I host financial planning packet sessions with you and your families. And I sit down and go over your financial planning packet with you line by line. And you'll go out with a clear picture of what you'd be paying out of pocket, if anything, to attend the University of Tulsa. And then also we have our career and professional development coaches. These people are going to help you in regards to what you want to do career wise. So you ladies, if you are interested in lingu linguistics, they will help you with getting internships and getting your foot in the door. So let's say you wanted to complete two internships before you became a sophomore they will help you set those up and they will also give you things like mock interviews so if you know you're interviewing for a particular company they'll say hey these are the questions that we're we'll, we're going to ask you and set you up for that way when you actually have the interview you'll go in with that confidence knowing that you'll get that job or get that placement and then you guys if that's not enough you also have the option to pair up with your with peer and alumni mentors and these people are students or graduates that have already been to the been through the program that you are interested in. So if you know you wanted to go through communi communications or you wanted to study business or you did want to get that minor in Spanish, you'll be paired up with someone that's already done that. So they can say things to you like, or give you advice like, hey, this is what you should focus on your sophomore year or, hey, these are the professors that are going to um, expose you to research and often internships. So this is definitely something to consider, even though this is an optional factor through the mentor program. And then lastly, we have your success coaches, which you are paired up with their success coach before the first day of school. So it's actually the summer or the semester before you enroll, you're paired up or the term before you're enrolled, you're paired up with their success coach. And these basically, these people are, I like to say like your right hand man, and they check off all the boxes that the other three bubbles cannot. So let's say you needed help with figuring out how to prioritize or manage your time throughout the week, or you're trying to figure out like, hey, I know these are the two things that I'm interested in, but I'm coming in as a freshman still undecided. How do I figure out what's right for me? Your success coach will help you get over those hurdles. They'll also help you with things like, hey, I know I want to study, I want to be in the business, in the school of business, but I don't know what I want to study within business. They'll help you figure out things like that as well. So all these people are, are housed at TU to, with your success in mind. And that's not only your freshman year, which I think you'll see a lot of universities have this pretty picture painted for you your freshman year. But I, at TU, we know that Life doesn't just happen your freshman year. You're not just going to need that support at the beginning. You're going to need it throughout your whole college career and then even after you graduate. And I think that's very important to scope out when you're exploring your college options because you want to make sure you're supported, especially since you're going into to something new that you've never done before. Do you guys have any questions? No, I don't. Okay, sweet. And this kind of, I believe our placement rate is so high due to things like our UTulsa Connect program, which is our, that mentorship program, as well as our success coaches and people just being in your face and letting you know, like, hey, I'm here to help without you having to hunt them down or search for them. They're already readily available for you as a TU student. But I also wanted to show you some average career average early career and mid-career sal salaries at the University of Tulsa are from our graduates. And this does factor in educators as well as engineers. So definitely something to keep in mind as you soak in those, those beautiful numbers. So I also wanted you guys, especially as seniors, our special application our special programs application is now open. So if you are interested in anything within our special programs, now is the time to apply. You have until January 15th 
to complete these applications if you are interested. So we do offer our Presidential Leaders Fellowship and it is open to all incoming fr freshmen. <laughs> and if you are interested in this program, this is a program where I like to say they don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk. They don't just sit on Twitter and say like, hey, these are the problems in the world and this, this is this way because of this. They actually go out there and do things about it. So if you are interested in being around like-minded people, this is definitely an opportunity to dive into um, that realm. This class enhances your leadership and fellowship skills. So if you are, if you know you would like to enhance that, or if you're like, hey, I would like to become a leader, this is definitely a, a program that will brush up those skills. And then we also have our honors program. I'm gonna be real cheesy right here. So it's not like a typical honors college, you guys, that you'd see at other universities. It's not accolades based. And I believe it's because every TU student is an honors student. Uh, we have academically rigorous programs on campus and we make sure to push and challenge our students throughout our curriculum. But through this honor programs, it's more of a great books and literature program. So if you are interested in critically thinking and discussing and chewing on uh, on, on, on work and, and also expanding on knowledge and perspectives that are different from yours. This is an opportunity to be involved through the honors program. You're only required to be active for two years, but if you'd like to be active all four years, you do have that option. And then we also have global scholars, which I like to say is kind of a twist on our honors program, except you get to travel abroad. So let's say there's an issue or a topic you'd like to research in Peru, you would go out to Peru and do what you need to do there. And then you'd come back and you'd discuss those issues or the research that you found with your cohort. The Global Scholars do require at least two study abroad trips, one with the cohort and one on your own. So if you wanted to explore and learn and make a difference while doing so, Global Scholars is your go-to. And then ladies, I don't think you guys were saying anything in regard to the medical field, but in case you are interested or if anything changes in between now and graduating, we do have an early careers in community medicine program. And this is a program where we provisionally accept five freshman students each year to be um, provisionally accepted into the OUT OU slash TU Medical School. So if you are interested in that kind of opportunity, this is that this is the chance to get that exposure as early as your freshman year. And it also gives you that weight off your back and not having to worry about what, what you're gonna do next. You already have that set in place. Any questions about special programs? I have a question on the Global Scholars. Mm -hmm. um, is there like any, any more information you could tell us about that or oh and um when you go like when uh, you go on uh like study abroad trips would it have to be uh, ooh, i'm trying to figure out a way to phrase it like does it have to be anything like tied to that culture that you're going to or could it be like maybe there's like uh that country has it advanced in a certain field of science like say I went say I went to go to um, I don't know why all the countries in my head just like disappeared but let's say some there was like a professor in Venezuela have um, like advanced in like some medical like research like could I go could I be a part of like global scholars and like go to a certain country for like any type of research um, that that they do. I wouldn't say any, but if we have partnerships with that particular university that are that has that is housed in that country, then yes, you can go. There are also plenty of opportunities outside of global scholars to study abroad. So if you wanted to do something that's kind of rogue from what this is, there we spread ourselves across seven hundred uh, study abroad trips two years ago. So there are plenty of opportunities to dive in and explore without going through the global scholars program but if you wanted a more structured um, cohort that is focused on 
solving issue, global issues, then global scholars would be uh, the route to take. This, am I answering your question? Yes, yes ma'am, you are. Uh, and, also, and if you want to dive in a bit deeper, I should have gave you all this warning ahead of time. So I like to refer to myself as a Jane of all trades. I know a little bit about a lot, but if you wanna dive a little deeper than surface level about these programs, you can definitely feel free to reach out to the chairs of the programs. And I can send you, if you reach out to me and let me know that you're interested in that, I can send you that contact information for them. Miss uh, okay. Dr. Foley. Dr. Foley is great and loves working with students that are interested in global, global scholars. Um, another question, I think you kind of answered it. I'm so sorry. I think I missed a little of it. it uh, my question was like, uh, like what's their objective when they like go abroad? It, dep it depends on what, like that's kind of based on you and what your intentions are when going there. But we, this program, it's, it spans across three courses and they explore big questions facing the world currently. And you also have the opportunity to study a foreign language through the program. But um, like I said, if you wanted more flexibility, you can also go on separate study abroad trips outside of Global Scholars. But I would okay. definitely, oh. I would definitely speak with the chairs and so you know how it works and what they want out of those trips, depending on what you want to do. Because I don't know exactly what you would want to get out of the trip and how that would line up with Global Scholars. Okay, great. Thank you. Let me see. Awesome. So I also wanted to make sure to dive in on hands on learning because Whenever you apply for jobs or get into grad school, you want to be able to tell your future employer. Hey, I didn't just sit in class for four years. I also gained experience within my career field. That way you're a more attractive applicant. And we have plenty of opportunity for you to dive in, get your hands dirty and build that resume. Um, I tied, I already talked about the new student programs a little earlier on, but just to reiterate, like if you don't even know where to start, you're gonna have that exposure the week before you even start school of different organizations and different programs that we have to offer students and you also get to meet new friends new peers and people that have the same ideas as you and can help you along your career path to getting that our path to getting that degree but we also offer research opportunities i like to say that we're like the trailblazers of of undergraduate research we started way back in the 80s which some schools don't even offer undergrad graduate research still to students so this is Something to consider if you are looking for that type of exposure, no matter if you're interested in medicine, bio, biology, or history, research is a great way to connect with your professors, build that rapport, and also, once again, build that resume. Um, we do have this thing called TURC, which is the Tulsa Undergraduate Research Challenge, and over 40% of our students actually are involved as undergrads in research. So if you want that opportunity, we will welcome you with open arms. They are very, they give our professors a lot of leeway in regards to research opportunities because we want to push you. We want you to explore things that are unknown and also discover things that you wouldn't have discovered within that, inside that classroom. Also, another way to be hands-on is through community service. Um, the TU community spread themselves across 100,000 community service hours a couple of years ago. I keep saying a couple of years ago, you guys, because our numbers from last year ha haven't come out yet. They're supposed to come out um, later on this month, so stay tuned for those updated numbers. But even with that being said, there are plenty of ways to be involved and you don't have to just say, hey, I want to do community service. Like if you're in an organization, most of our organizations are already involved in community service. But if you're like, hey, Angelique, I want to hone in just 
on community service. We have this thing or this program called True Blue Neighbors, and this is a community service oriented organization. So if you want it to be the forefront leader of community service hours on campus, True Blue Neighbors is a great opportunity. And then back to internships, y'all. If you want to intern five times before you graduate, you have that opportunity. If you want to intern one time each year, you have that opportunity. You just have to make sure to work with your professors and get that exposure. Some, um, some uh, majors also offer credit for you to in course credit if you go through internships. So definitely dive in. I highly, I always encourage my students to don't wait till college to intern because you don't know, you can't know what you really want to do until you actually do it. I've had students um, in Fort Worth say, hey, yeah, I wanted to be a nurse. And she had a 4.0, she had a 35 on the ACT. And she was a brilliant student, but she was like, yeah, I shadowed some nurses this past summer before I started my senior year and absolutely hated it. It's not for me. It's not what I thought it was going to be. And then I also have students saying like, I've, I've been interning since I started high school. I know exactly what I'm going, to, going into and I'm, I'm loving every second of it. And then I have students that get into college and think that a particular major is one way, but then they get into that internship and they're already two years in and they realize they don't like what they're, like what they're pursuing. So highly encourage you to use the summer if you haven't interned already Use the summer before your college career wisely to just get that exposure to whatever career field you're interested in to see if you're actually interested in it. Have any questions? No, no questions. So I don't know if this was Natalie or Daz that was asking me all those questions about global scholars, but I think this slide was made just for you. <laughs> so, as I was saying, there are so many opportunities to explore the world and get credit for it. And I think one of the best ways to learn is through different cultures, backgrounds, and beliefs. So, we want to make sure you have those study abroad opportunities. I currently have a junior. He's a junior. So, how long have we been in school? Maybe two, three months. He hasn't even been a junior for long and y'all know COVID happened. So studying abroad trips weren't as prevalent, but he actually has already completed as a junior four study abroad trips. And he was actually in New Zealand and then COVID happened and he had to cut, it was supposed to be a six week trip. No, no, it was supposed to be a semester long trip. And he ended up only being there for four weeks. So I was like, man, I wish I could go to New Zealand even if it is only for four weeks but not only do I get to do that, I get to learn, I get to grow. And it's also a lot cheaper to study abroad than to go to a city on your own outside of a university. So if you want to explore, if you want to dive in and expose yourself, get in there because the opportunities are there. You just have to take them. There are plenty of opportunities to choose from as far as the longevity of the trip. You can go for a week to a couple of weeks for all the way to a year long, if that is what you want to do. You just have to um, make sure you work with your advisors because they want to make sure you're still getting all of that credit, all of that credit that you get whenever you are studying abroad will transfer over to TU through our partnerships. But um, we also have class trips. So if you take a particular course, you'll be able to go on a trip through that particular class. Like let's say you're taking French or if you're taking Spanish, I actually have um, a student who went, she was studying international business. She wanted to go into fashion. She was studying international business and she minored, minored in France or in French. So she actually got to spend a summer in France. And I think that's amazing because she's literally diving into to the realm that she's interested in and she hasn't even obtained the degree yet. So if you are interested in that, definitely consider it. If you're like, hey, Angelique, that sounds great, but I just don't want to get on a plane and fly. We have a great international community on campus. Over 15% or around 15% of our students are international on campus. So even if you don't leave campus, you'll still be exposed to different cultures, backgrounds, and beliefs. 
Any questions? Um, I don't have a question about that. It's kind of, it's kind of connected to what you just said about uh, international mm -hmm. students. Like how much, like, do you know your diversity statistics? So about 44% of our students are minorities. Um, and then that about 15% are international students. Okay, cool. Thank you. You are welcome. If you want me to break it down by uh, race, I can also do that. <clears throat> so have either of you ladies been to the city of Tulsa? No, I have a uh, family there. Oh, perfect. Do you have you visited recently? No, actually. That is totally fine. <laughs> um, I love the city of Tulsa, y'all. So my spill used to be, I like to refer to the city of Tulsa as a baby Austin without all the weirdness and all the traffic. But then y'all, I basically got chewed out by my coworker and she's like, we're not, we're not the next Austin. We're not the next Nashville. We're Tulsa. And I was like, you know what, girl, you're right. You are right. We, the city of Tulsa, we are our own thing. We have our own feel, our own vibe. And I should probably just stop referring to it as Austin, especially since it's a lot cooler because like I said, it, don't, it doesn't have that traffic. And that just drives me nuts whenever I'm in Austin. But we have so many things to do within the city of Tulsa and pretty much everything's within about a 10 minute radius of campus. So if you wanted to go see our minor league baseball team play, or you wanted to go on a river walk along the Arkansas River, or even see Cardi B at the BOK Center, you have that opportunity. We have over 100 live music venues in the city of Tulsa. We love to highlight local artists in the city. This painting is actually a mural of one of my old coworkers. Her husband actually painted this. It's a beautiful thing to, to drive by. Um, and I'm just so amazed every time knowing that he was the person to complete this. Um, and then back to sports, we have a minor league baseball and hockey team, the Oilers and the Drillers. And then we also have the Tulsa Roughnecks, which is a, a, a semi-pro soccer team. So if you're interested in being exposed and diving into the city, you have that kind of opportunity to have fun stepping off of campus. Um, Route 66 actually runs through Tulsa and they're revamping Route 66. So they're adding more restaurants. And when you become upperclassmen, there's also gonna be more bars and breweries and just time to, time to dive in and explore with your friends. If you wanted to go to brunch on Saturday and then go to the gathering place, which is a beautiful place to be on a nice, uh, on a nice weather day. It's pictured on the bottom on the bottom right. It's actually um, in phase two of three, which I'm actually I didn't even know that they were going to keep adding on to it. I'm already impressed with what they have to offer. Y'all, I promise y'all, when was it? It was pre COVID. So it's hard to remember those times. But me and my fiance, we went to go visit Tulsa. And it was a Saturday and it was about 70 degrees. And it was the best time to be I want to say it was in November. I say it's in, in November, it's about 70 degrees on a Saturday, and the gathering place had um, food trucks, they had like fire trucks and ambulance trucks for the little kids to kind of explore. The kids are getting their face painted, and it was just a beautiful day. I was like looking around in every corner to make sure like we weren't being recorded because I felt like we were in a movie because how, of how nice it was. But I always tell my students, if you can make it out to Tulsa, make sure you extend your stay to also have time to explore the city because there are so many things to do. And if you want any food suggestion, suggestions, I'm your go-to, definitely hit me up because I live vicariously through y'all when I can't eat at Tulsa because there are so many places to, to stuff your face. But I, all, all that to say, you guys, I'm pretty much done with my spill and I wanna leave the floor open to you guys if you have any questions. 